horror movies I could easily survive. I'm already going to flat out say, th what horror movies could you guys survive before we even get in? Michael Myers, so Halloween. All you got to do is literally leave that city the night of the of Halloween. Um, Chucky, I would beat the living out of that dumb doll. I would shove that mother in a locker and close his dumb in there. And then he's just, right? Like, what is he going to do? I think Saw, I would be dead. What's a horror movie where you're 100% dead? Saw. I don't think I'm living Saw. Uh, I don't think I'm living Smile. Uh, I think I, I, I think Human Centipede, I'm dead. I think The Platform, I'm dead. I think Terrifier, I'm dead. I think Conjuring, I'm dead. I think a lot of them, I'm dead, right? But I think a good chunk of slasher films you could easily survive. You know, horror movies were a big part of my childhood. And not because I used to watch them. On the contrary. The I used Thing? You think you would survive The Thing? I think I, I think any... Chat. If one of The Thing... If you don't know what The Thing is, it's an alien that kills you and then replicates a copy of you and acts like you until it can further kill other people and replicate them. I think if all 3,000 of us were put into a city... And one of the thing was released. All of us would die. I don't think any of us would live. I think being able to determine who is the thing is impossible. Outside of the blood test. Uh, and what is it called? Uh, the firing where like you can't replicate metal. To avoid them at all cost. The jump scares, the gruesome kills, all of it terrifying to me. I was a scaredy cat, I'm not gonna lie. But I think what scared me the most back then was the fact that if I was in any of those movies, I would not survive. What is a six year old gonna do against this? But now as a full fledged- oh, that was literally the thing. Grown 21 year old. I actually believe I have a pretty good shot against most of these horror movies. And yeah, I said most of them. I'll be going over a few of the horror. Oh, the purge? I am chilling, dude. Oh my god. The purge, go into the middle of the woods, dig a hole in the ground, put a tarp over it, and then you're good. Hide in a tree for fucking 10 hours. I've easily giving you my strategy and my thought process in the process. And some of the ones that I can't. Nightmare on Elm Street is such a shit movie. I watched fucking 30 minutes of that shit and then turned it off. When she had the first nightmare and like two people got murdered. Oh my god. It was so boring. His main villain is Freddy Krueger. And honestly, I wasn't that scared of Freddy growing up. Even though his powers are crazy, he just made me not want to eat pizza while watching his movies. His whole thing is killing people in their dreams, so you can imagine how difficult that would be to survive. Leading the victims in his movie to do crazy things to avoid dying to him. Pictures of coffee, caffeine pills, and all of it, of course, eventually fails. Most of the time, they end up developing this buddy system where they have to watch each other sleep. And honestly, that's the dumbest thing they could do. Because what if the other one falls asleep? You're done. Draw two for your mistake, buddy. They had it all wrong. I have two solutions for Freddy. First, the more difficult of the two is move out of Ohio, which when I say it out loud. <laughs> Bro, it's, it's always that simple. The same, dude, it's even more simple for a Halloween. You don't even need to move out of the state. You just need to move out of the city that he, that he goes to. Oh, it's not that hard because who wants to live in Ohio? And two, the easier one in my opinion, which they should have been doing since the very first movie, I just simply won't sleep. I mean, the only way he could get me is if I'm dreaming. And if I just don't sleep, then he can never get me. It's simple. I don't sleep regardless. So if my life's on the line, I'm going to definitely not sleep. Even if I somehow fall asleep, my dreams be weird as hell anyway. So he won't even know what the hell is going on. And worst case scenario, if Freddy's giving me the works in the dream world, I'll just pull him out of my dream and have someone with a shotgun there waiting for him. And if a shotgun don't work than a shotgun with holy water he not beating that the leprechaun i've never even heard of this now this one this one is the one that you guys are gonna underestimate he's this hideous little leprechaun who has magical powers and he'll come after you if you touch his gold he has the ability to teleport grant wishes regenerate and impersonate people's voices and also guns don't work on him like look one two three four his weaknesses vary from movie to movie sometimes it's a four-leaf clover sometimes it's a piece of metal and sometimes it's a medallion and you're probably thinking just avoid have you guys ever seen the the leprechaun is my favorite movie it looks so shitty. You would hate the leprechaun.
Yeah, it looks like a fucking poorly made slasher film. The go. Don't be silly. <laughs> I need the gold. But I'm still surviving though. So here's the plan. I will take the gold back home after stumbling upon it in the woods. Then place it into the basement that I do not have and put it in a safe. The leprechaun will obviously come by asking, where's me gold? Then I'll kick him into the safe and lock him in the safe. Now you're probably like, he's gonna break out. He has powers. Let me get to that. Okay. That's not true. Cause before I went home, I picked up a four leaf clover that I found in the woods and I put it on top of the safe. Now I have a leprechaun in my possession and I can get him to grant any wish I want. I bet y'all forgot about that. He could grant wishes. It's literally that easy. Now I survived. Y'all cannot tell me that's not a W strategy. Go ahead. I got my ear to the mic say it say it. only thing is i gotta own that basement for the rest of my life because if somebody moves that four leaf clover it's done for me Before an earthquake happens halloween is by far the easiest movie to survive even if you want to stay there that night just just do a brisk walk that's all you got to do right if you're getting chased by michael myers just hit him with a speed walk right Maybe a, a brisk jog until morning, and then he'll go away. Isn't he slow as fuck? He only walks. It's the dumbest fucking villain ever. It's scary in that he only walks, right? But, like, you, how is he ever going to catch me? If I'm only walking, or if he's only walking and I drive three miles away, he's never, I can wait t an hour and a half, and then he'll show up again. And then I just drive to the other side of town. Or I run to the other side of town. He teleports. He drives too. We know the villain of this movie, Michael Myers. You see, at first- I, I hide on a roof. I, I, stay, I, stay, I stay in a tree house with one entrance. I wasn't even going to put him as a villain I could beat because I thought he was immortal. Especially after what happened in Halloween Kills. He got jumped by the whole town. This woman- This is the worst movie I've ever seen. The worst horror movie. Worse than The Barbarian. They beat this man to death, shot him 10 times, hit him with a baseball bat, stabbed him, laying on the ground. Oh, we killed him. He stands back up and kills legitimately everybody there. Legitimately every single person there, 20 people. He just murders them. How to, uh, what is that, a uh, clothing iron? But then Halloween Ends came out. And that's when I realized Michael Myers is a fraud. He's just an extremely, and I mean extremely durable old man. He's not a mortal. He gets whooped by a random kid from the suburb. Isn't this Michael Myers the same dude who took out a whole team of firefighters by himself? I'm not gonna act like the kid Corey killed him or something, but still, getting beat up by a kid, that's crazy. So yeah, as long as it's not the Halloween Kills Michael Myers or the 2007 Michael Myers, that, that dude was ruthless i think i have a pretty good shot against michael honestly just set up a venue bring Lori, bring the whole town of haddonfield and they can all just watch me beat up the boogeyman i've never seen friday the 13th are they good now i could be a little smarty pants to say the original friday i don't know if i would survive jason because i've never seen them i it's turned just... it off after 10 minutes dude i just feel like all the og slasher films like from the 90s are just so boring because it's it's like early horror right like even the early scream movies it's just it's back when like that used to be the shit right if you ask your parents was halloween scary when it came out they're gonna be like oh yeah oh that was oh my oh my god like, they're going to be ranting and raving about how fucking Michael Myers gave them nightmares. You watch Michael Myers. Dude, a five-year-old could watch Michael Myers now. Like, it's not. I'll go into the movie theater watching Michael Myers. I'll sleep like a fucking baby, dude. I won't be scared in any way whatsoever. I'll watch a modern horror movie like The Conjuring or like Smile or some shit. I'm going to bed thinking of somebody standing in the fucking corner. And unlike Michael, he runs. Like, yeah, he'll walk towards you to scare you for a while. But if he really just wants to kill you, he's going to chase after you. And really, he doesn't have to chase because Jason can low-key teleport. So what are we supposed to do? Well, I got you. You see, I've played hours of the Friday the 13th video game. And I consider that game pretty accurate to the movies. I know all of Jason's weaknesses. If I was at Camp Crystal Lake, I have the firecrackers, the flare gun, and the shotgun on deck. And even if I somehow die, I'll just 
just come back as Tommy Jarvis. And after that, it's easy wins. Even if all that failed, I'll just escape like I do all the time in the game. The easiest method, just drive out. Just hop in, start the car. Uh, uh I can't drive. In all honesty, one of the easiest ways to kill somebody, like a slasher film horror movie character, is get a bunch of C4 in a room, lure them into the room, lock that room, and then blow that fucking building up. Yeah, I'll just shoot his mom. Throw sand in their eyes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Get get them get them to start sneezing from their from their seasonal allergies. That'll really get them going. Start shoving ragweed pollen in their face. The new finance at Freddy's movie. Now this one's a little tricky. Cause first of all, you're not dealing How with. How does he know he's gonna survive the FNAF movie if he hasn't seen it? Your average Joes anymore, okay? These are ghosts, spirits, demons controlling animatronics. Second of all, the setting terrifying. A pizza place, let alone a Chuck E. Cheese style pizza place. Yeah, they definitely got the edge in that regard. And on top of all of that, it's four killers, not just. What would one the last? What would the last horror movie you would ever want to be in be? Maybe FNAF. Being in five in real life Five Nights at Freddy's would be utterly fucking terrifying. That or Saw. Being in okay, or Human Centipede. If I'm if I'm the the leader of the human centipede, not that bad. Not that bad, right? If you're the leader of the human centipede, not that bad, right? If you're the middle of the human centipede, that's rough. One. So your awareness has to like be on. near the back end, say there's like a 10-person human centipede and you're like number nine. Oof. You're getting the worst of the worst. I need to find out at Freddy's gameplay. I've watched all the game theory videos. All I'm missing is meeting the creator himself, Scott Coffin. And that can be arranged. Just hit me up. I know the animatronics better than they know themselves, honestly. Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica, they're not doing nothing to me. Y'all think you would survive the movie Platform? Yeah. If you've never seen Platform, how it works. I love this movie. It's my favorite movie. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Right? It's on Netflix. It's in Spanish, but it's dubbed in English. And they have subtitles. There's a... You're in prison, right? There's two people per level. It goes to what? Level 333. Number Level 1 to level 333. There is a plate of food. Or like a big slab of food of like probably a hundred thousand two hundred thousand calories worth of food that slowly moves down through the middle of the platform right every level starting at level one going down to level 333 you only have five minutes to eat right after five minutes it goes down after five or a minute and it goes down every time right and so less and less food accrues as you go down you can't keep any food you can only eat uh, while you have that slab there, or else the building will heat up and you'll die, right? After, like, level 100, there's no food left. And every month, they randomly switch what level you're at, right? So you could one month be at level 1, one month be at level 300, one month be at level 200. I'm killing my cellmate. That's how I survive. I'm murdering my cellmate, right? In that scenario... That if I if I wake up and I see level 235, you got to kill your cellmate, right? Somebody just said, why? You'll starve to death, right? You have unlimited water, but after level, uh, yeah, you got to eat them, right? You got, if you want to survive the platform, you have to be a cannibal it, because you're there for like a year, right? Or some absurd amount of time. And if you're on level one through like 60, you're fine, right? But if you're on level 200, after a week, you'll starve to death because whenever it gets down to you, there will be no food left. So you got to kill your cellmate, but you don't want to kill him too early, right? Because then the meat's going to start rotting. So what you really want to do is you want to wait it out a week. Oh, come on, man. Maybe there's going to be a little bit of food for us, right? Oh, come on, man. Uh, what, what if it's Brooke? Okay, well, that's a different scenario, right? I, I, I'm, say, I'm, pan I'm going into this recognizing that the person that's with me is a rando, right? Oh, man, day five. Oh, still no food. Maybe tomorrow. There's going to be no tomorrow for him. That night, I fucking kill him, right? And then you start eating him, 
progressively. That's the only way you're living. And y'all are like, oh, that's some psycho shit. That's literally what they do in the movie. They start killing people. You have to kill your cellmate to live. Or else you're fucked. Keeping them doors closed. And Foxy, what is Foxy gonna do? Where's Foxy? Well, there he is. <laughs> I've never seen the Terrifier movies. I want to see him so bad. No. He just said no. Is Terrifier that scary? Now, I'm going to be very honest. I know it's the thumbnail, but I am not surviving a single Saw movie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Literally every trap is almost impossible to survive. And what annoys me the most is that the creator of the games, he really thinks he's being fair. He thinks he's helping people appreciate life. That's that pain ideology. No, bro. You're just a murderer. Only a handful of people survive your movies. Out of like a hundred people. And I would know. I watch Kill Count. And look at how unfair some of these traps are. The chain trap from Saw 3. Bro, how is he gonna rip that out his lip? His jaw would come out. The carousel trap from Saw 6, they literally did not have a choice in the matter. It was up to one person to determine if they lived or not. Even the first trap that we saw in Saw 1, which was the bathroom trap, was unfair. If Jigsaw's whole ideology is everyone deserves a chance, then how come in the bathroom trap only one of them could survive? This man's a phony. I wouldn't be able to survive. I'm sorry. What would I even be in there for? Jaywalking, tax evasion, arson? None of that is a big deal. The only trap I could really see myself surviving is maybe the hand box trap from Saw 2. If you look behind her, there's a chair. I would use that. I've never seen any of the Saw movies. Are they good? Chair to break the glass and take the syringe. Boom. A thousand IQ. You see, I never watched this movie, but I did watch plenty of The Office and I played Fortnite. So I'm pretty sure I could figure it out. So here's the plan. I would have called out of work. I know, I know, easy. Okay, I'll be realistic. If I was trapped in the office building with 80 something people and we are forced to do a battle royale, would I survive? Probably not. I don't think I could stab someone with a pair of scissors. I'm sorry, but- Wait, What movie is this? Oh, the Belco experiment. Dude, I've had that on my watch list for so long. But- Damn, you think you survive in an office battle to the death? I'd say I'd have higher chances than the average person. I don't think I would survive. But if you shoved me in a random office, I think my chances of living would be higher than most people. I'm confident in that. I read up online, apparently the building had an armory for some reason. If there's an armory, then there's guns. And where there's guns, there's room for an American. <laughs> This movie took place in Colombia, so they don't know anything about shooting guns. Me though, from the United States of America, I know everything about guns. I sleep with a shotgun under my pillow, a Glock in my sock, and an AK in my PJs. So when it comes to shooting people, yeah, I got it. I'm surviving Belko experiment easily. As you guys saw though, there's only so many horror movies that I can't survive. I mean, realistically, I'm unbeatable. Except if you're talking any paranormal movies. I'm not surviving any of the Condrins, insidious, none of that stuff. Keep them demons away. And moral of the story, 